Well, Kim, thanks for taking time to talk a little bit about your experience in the New England College Doctor of Education program. Uh, so to start off with, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Kimberly Sarfty. I graduated from the program in 2015. I also attended NEC for my master's in professional writing. I graduated from that program in 2012. I had such a wonderful experience that when I wanted to go on to get my doctorate, NEC was the only place that um, I wanted to pursue an opportunity from. I currently work as an assistant superintendent in Nashua, for Nashua Public Schools in Nashua, New Hampshire. I oversee all of the um, elementary schools. We have 12 elementary schools and then two preschools. And um, most of my work has to do with leading um, curriculum instruction and assessment. I also manage all of our grants. Um, we have a staff of, gosh, over about 3,000 uh, staff members here at, in Nashua. And um, I just love my job, so. Great, yep. and what years were you in the doctoral program? So I was there from 2012 until 2015. Excellent. So one of the first cohorts we had in the in the program. So talk a little bit about your experience in the program. Yeah. So um, my experience was I can't say enough about how positive my experience was. Um, one of the things that I really remember about NEC is the hashtag you belong here. And I always felt when I was on campus that I belong there, even um, so our program was a hybrid program. And even when we were accessing lessons and resources online, I knew that I could call any one of my professors at any time and they would be accessible to me. I can say when I so when I started the program, um, there was an individual from the cohort before me who kind of stuck out and she was kind of the rock star of her cohort. And I remember thinking on the first day during orientation with you, Gavin, that I wanted to be that person. So I remember saying to myself, I'm going to be first and I'm going to be the best. That's what I want to do. I'm not sure that I was the best, but I definitely was the first to defend, which was really <laughs> exciting. Um, but that's because of the guidance that I had. Uh, one of the things that I really appreciated was the ability to, or actually guidance from my professors to help me kind of refine what my um, what my study or what the, the focus of my study was going to be. I started out really broad and I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to um, end up focusing on. And my professors helped me through our coursework be able to kind of refine that process. And then once I knew what my target was and I, I wanted to focus on the impact of dual immersion on academic achievement and math and also in ELA for native and non-native speakers of English. Um, once I knew that that was going to be my focus, I had the opportunity to kind of weave the research uh, like from that topic into all of my coursework. And so that really helped me to, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm an expert in the field, but I definitely am really well-versed because I spent three full years studying yeah. dual immersion. Yeah. What would you say are the, the primary strengths of the program? Um, I think, I mean, certainly the people there. I, I remember, I mean, we had such a strong connection with all of our professors. Um, they just really, truly cared about us and wanted us to succeed. I do remember on the first day, you know, you talked about during our first orientation, you talked about how some of us would end up completing the program. Some of us would end up ABD. And then some of us would... Um, would unfortunately not make it. Um, but I knew I knew from that very first day that every every person who worked at NEC was going to do everything that they possibly could so that we could be successful. And I mean, that certainly meant a lot to me. Um, another strength, I think, is the fact that the professors helped us to pursue other opportunities. So for instance, Bill Preble gave me the opportunity to participate in a research study in Reston, Reston Virginia and a dual immersion school. And I was able to, that was kind of my first glimpse outside of the schools that I had visited in the Boston area. It was kind of my first glimpse into a dual immersion school elsewhere. And that prompted me actually to move to Colorado for a year so that I could study dual immersion schools while I was in the program in Denver. Um, there was a lot of flexibility. There was um, a lot of opportunity for growth. I think, you know, we never had, we were never told that we weren't good enough and we were never told that, um, you know, that we only had one chance to get things right. We had multiple opportunities to demonstrate what we knew. And then we were afforded the opportunity to, to submit multiple iterations of our work so that we got to whatever the desirable outcome was. 
Great. Now thinking about like what, where were you were in your career and what you were like as a person or profession before the program, how did you change during the program and how did the program impact you know your ability to do what you're doing now? Yeah. Um, so when I started in the program, I started out as an, an ESL teacher in Lawrence, Massachusetts, and then I moved to become an ESL coach. And then I moved my last year in the program in the same district to become um, a, a dean of curriculum and instruction. And I oversaw basically um, science for the whole district. And Lawrence is a pretty big district. And then also all things related to English as a second language. Um, I can say that what really helped me to, to be prepared for district level leadership is having that organizational leadership class. I remember that class really helped me to, to um, be able to understand what my strengths were and then also what my areas of unfinished learning were. And I certainly know that um, navigating the political frame of leadership was something that was going to be challenging for me. It was something that was pointed out to me. I have a lot of passion and I knew what my goals were. Um, but that political savvy was lacking. And that's something I've had to work really hard to, to kind of grow myself in that area. Um, I know, so in, in my district, you know, we affect a lot of change in my office. And again, we have 3000 employees. And so when there is an, an initiative, we can't just move full steam ahead and just tell everybody, okay, this is the direction the district is going in. We have to explain, we have to explain the research. We have to explain the why. We have to have people kind of um, support the effort so that it, it doesn't become a district-led initiative. Really what I'm seeing now, especially when we talk about the science of reading movement, we have a lot of antiquated practices in our district. And unfortunately we have resources that were given to teachers that are grounded in disproven research. And what I've done over the last year and a half is build this coalition of the willing who, because of their own interest in the research and wanting to do better for their students, they're the ones coming to me and saying, listen, we have to, we have to make some changes. And we have made tremendous growth over the last year and a half. I mean, uh, you know, and that growth is certainly translated in when it comes to student achievement, but those things wouldn't have happened if I didn't, if I didn't again, know exactly what my area of unfinished learning was and then where I had to kind of grow. And I, I would say I made a lot of mistakes early on in my leadership experience where I, I just felt like if I'm passionate enough, everybody's going to be behind me. That is not the case. Um, and uh, I, I definitely, you know, just like the book says, when you know better, you do better. That's what kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, so I definitely think that the organizational leadership class helped me the most. Yeah. You know, think about yourself as a person. How how did you grow as a person throughout the program? Like how are you different as a person, not just a professional? Um, so different. Um I think, you know, I mean, I'm I like to be a lot of fun and I'm super boisterous, but I definitely it's funny because I am such an extrovert, but whenever it came to even an opportunity like this, talking to somebody or, you know, getting up in front of a class and leading a presentation, I, I did not feel comfortable at all. And, you know, obviously I was kind of forced into delivering presentations and practicing my public speaking and practicing my communication skills. And so, um, building those skills certainly helped me professionally because, you know, I lead school board meetings every yeah. month. Um, I'm in front of teachers for a professional development days, new teacher orientation. There's a lot of sort of FaceTime with folks that's not so per on a personal level, I'm okay, but in a more yeah. formal way, it, it becomes challenging. So I would say um, really just the program really helped me to build a lot of confidence. Excellent. Anything else you'd like to share about the, pro the doctoral program at MEC? I mean, you know, everybody that I talk to about the program or about just sort of my experience, I, I just, I really brag about the program because it was so, it made such a mark on me. I have, you can't see it on my walls, but I have a lot of New England College sort of memorabilia. I'm really proud to, I'm really proud to have attended New England College. My, my master's experience as well really helped me to prepare it really helped to prepare me to be able to, you know, write a dissertation and write all the grants that I write every single day. Um, and I just think it was just such a seamless transition to go from a master's program to the doctoral program at NEC because I just knew no matter what it is that I 
that I set my my eyes on in terms of a goal that I wanted to accomplish, I knew that the whole team was going to be behind me. Um, so I just I just had a really great experience, and I hope other people get to have the same experience as well. Thanks so much, Kim. Thank you, Gavin.